that stuff and sell it. Okay. The next item is item number 21, but before we go to it, I want to just note for the record that the following items are being read into the record and will be presented on May 13th. Those include items number 22, 23, 25, 27, 28, 31 to 42, 45, and 47. And item number 21 is an application for a certificate of appropriateness in the borough of Manhattan, docket number 15-0097, block 97, lot 7502, 229 Water Street in the South Street Seaport Historic District, a ship chandlery built in 1801. This is an application to reconstruct the brick facade. Can he be back on this, Michael? I mean, yes. this is Seaport District, so, okay. Okay. Fine. Okay. Good afternoon, Kara Soto of Landmark Staff. 229 Water Street is located on the east side of the street uh, with Beekman Street to the south and Peck Slip to the hmm. north at uh, the South Street Seaport Historic District. The application is to reconstruct the Water Street facade uh, in response to damages related to the effects of work includes resetting the existing granite piers and lintels and reconstructing the brick masonry above with new brick to closely match the existing brickwork as closely as possible. Um, the existing brownstone lintels and sills and wood windows will be salvaged and reinstalled. The owner is here to present the application. How do I uh, forward? Um, okay, Jason Friedman, uh, Beekman Landing Condominium, uh, community board member, everything. Uh, okay, uh, so I'll just read what I have here. 229 Water Street is described in the South Street Seaport Historic District designation report as erected in 1801 and occupied by Armstrong and Smith, um, okay. Armstrong and Smith ship chambers. The facade is of a Flemish bond brickwork but retains few of its original features. In a 1916 view of Water Street, this building was shown with four sets of Greek Revival double doors. Um, the present storefront bears little uh, resemblance to its earlier ground floor. The three upper floors have splayed stone fluted double keystones. Recently, the building was developed and combined with 227 and uh, 231 Water Street. So those two build the, the 17 and a half footer and the 30 footer. Um, the building still looks much like they did on the upper floors of the 1930s tax photo, and since 1801, the upper floors have received numerous brick replacements, which we show on page eight. Um, okay, most notably at the fourth floor and around the windows. During Superstorm Sandy, the building sustained extensive structural masonry damage along the facades of all three buildings. Water Street Structural Engineer reports foundation, reported foundation erosions, major cracks, in the uh, walls, and um, and the first through fourth floors of the building no longer had masonry ties after they were developed, so the wall was actually just not connected back to the building on any of these three buildings. Uh, due to the severity of the damage, age of the building, and evidence of the building developers removed the only original Water Street masonry ties, we propose a full removal of the existing Water Street masonry wall above the uh, stone lintels there, and. Um, we will put. We, we propose putting back in a, st a stuccoed over brownstone band, using the same brownstone uh, sills and keystones, and building it in a Flemish bond, uh, and using soldier bricks at the at the bottom, and all the details that we have, uh, you know, in the existing building. These are a couple of brick samples which we brought here today. They are not the same size as the the what we would call the most majority of st historic brick there. We prefer, and the community board preferred, uh, the, this color blend, which is um, just has a little bit of tonality difference, which might reference back to the patchiness of the existing facade versus a more regular uh, brick. And uh, why can't you salvage the brick that's there? That's a question I'd like to. Have. We, have, we have a structural engineer here, um, and I think that the, the truth is, most of the brick we can't get. We, there's no guarantee that we can get enough good brick to build this facade. And, and we're not really in a position as a condominium to yeah. 
yeah. weigh the that that potential, right? If we have to abandon that plan, or um, we believe that there's not enough good brick there, then we really have to go with a full rebuild. I mean, people live in this building. It's just. No, I'm not saying yeah. that. I'm saying do the full rebuild, but use the existing brick, salvage it, and then re put reinstall it with mixing it in with new brick as. <laughs> well, I think that's not so tested. For, I don't know how, how good of an idea that is. We're going to go down the line and say, well, we promise to mix in some new brick and old brick, and then it's not what you like, whereas we are trying to, you know, propose something that's not only, uh, you know, possible uh, financially for the building um, in terms of the means and methods of rebuilding a brick wall versus carefully taking down the bricks and having some guys yeah. scrape them down and clean them. The commission does approve on a regular basis. Uh, taking down a wall, salvaging the bricks to the extent possible, and then reusing them. Michael, any question? Uh, I guess I have a question for you and yeah. for the structural engineer. The, the nature of the separation is between the lines on the facade or between the front facade and the party wall and the perimeter beams? You tell me what's right. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, and if it's a separation between the front facade and the party walls, why can't you do the, the repair a la Merchant's House Museum where you, you remove an outer wise brick, install a reinforcing rod that penetrates the party wall, and then replace that outer wise brick again? Okay, there's, I think, a few. Name on the record. I'm sorry, Marie Ennis yeah. of Old Structures Engineering, I apologize. Um, okay. When we came to the building, we found a number of different okay. things. Um, Jason, actually, do you have the. Um, Overall facade. Oh, overall facade. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, the first slide? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, so, what you see here is um, temporary bracing that was put in that's tied back 20 feet into the building into the second floor uh, floor diaphragm because this uh, granite lintel and um, post here have moved out four inches and um, it's no longer stable. So we had to do first emergency um, stabilization down there. So then we came inside and maybe go back to that slide uh, where it showed the cracks that. Is that because the front foundation rolled and the, the whole previous system is? It has rolled somewhat. Uh, you know, they had about eight feet of water right. move through the building in this direction. And then this is the leeward wall. So there was a lot of wind suction on it. So it's not that the actual wall is pulling apart the facade, but uh, it's moved as a whole outwards, all three wides of it, plus the granite, so the whole wall has moved outwards. Um, and we looked at, uh, could we save this wall? Um, could you go to the slide where you show which bricks are original? Okay. Um, if uh, this is the minimum, I would say, of yeah. the original bricks. In here. When you look back at the facade, there's a lot of lichen growth on some of the replacement brick that's there, so I think it's a very porous brick. Plus, the facade has a belly in it, and so it's always catching water, and um, there's a lot of biological growth. So we want to replace those bricks because they were inferior bricks to begin with. Um, and second of all, in order the, to... The replacement bricks. Yeah, the replacement okay. bricks were not sympathetic and they were not a good quality in my opinion. Um, but in order to restrain this thin granite pier structure that's already leaning into the street four inches just here, um, we have to rebuild a reinforced strip of brick here. You know, it can be reinforced behind the facade brick, which was, okay. I believe, what you were refer referring to. But then we have to selectively replace a lot of brick up there and so at the end of the day, we're rebuilding a very significant portion of the facade. And the owners of the building asked, well, you know, if we're going to go to that extent, is there any sense in considering wholesale replacement of the brick so the brick will be more uniform? Because I believe you were not able to find the exact same size as the Yeah, that's right. I mean, the, the same brick, if we want to really go and get the same brick, uh, you're talking about maybe 25 times cost to than to what we can get. It's got to be made a small batch, uh, handmade size, you know, color. It's unfortunate, you know, I, it, I know we're not on trial here about like what's going on in the building, but you know, people live here, it's fully occupied. I live here, I have a three-year-old son, and the idea of taking a chance on picking apart a building from 1801 and beyond versus 
starting a project where we're rebuilding from top to bottom, it's, uh, it's a hard thing for the community in the building to go and try and pursue anything other than that. Do you have any of the original brick here that we can compare this to? I, I don't. Um, you know, we have these pictures, and uh, no, the, I know. Well, let's just pictures. We, right. I think we would feel comfortable with. Okay. If I had an original brick that I could actually sure. compare your new sample to. Sure. Um, okay. Okay. Any other questions? Excuse me. Any questions further? Okay. Testimony. Where is it? Barbara. Okay. Thank you. Barbara Zay of the Historic Districts Council. HDC questions why this level of reconstruction is necessary given that the wall is neither load-bearing nor being redesigned. On a building of this age, the original brick has settled, giving the building a certain patina and providing evidence of its date of construction. New brick will certainly stand out, changing the building's character and making it difficult to identify it as having been built in 1801. At HDC's annual preservation conference this past March, Rick Cook of Cook Fox Architects was one of the recipients of the organization's design awards for his firm's work on historic Front Street in the South Street Seaport, just around the corner from 229 Water Street. In his remarks, Mr. Cook emphasized the importance of not overburnishing those fragile buildings since once a wall is rebuilt or repointed, it loses its sense of time and place. To preserve the relationship between the old and the new, the firm worked with a structural engineer on a process called mortar injection in order that these 200-year-old buildings could wear their age comfortably, a project which was approved by the Landmarks Commission less, less than a decade ago. At the very least, a convincing case should be made for why the current brick may not be restored and reused. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other testimony? Okay, community board, we don't have anything from? It was, uh, okay. yeah. uh, it was uh, unanimous approval, not with the full board. Okay. And I, I didn't vote. You're recused, of course. So was Chris. Okay, you want to respond to anything that was said in the testimony? Uh, Just no, walk I, to, I, back up to the I front, I feel please. terrible about, uh, about everything I do is to, is, is to work to not have uh, buildings from 1801 torn down, but it's just yeah. really unfortunate, you know, really. I, if you don't yeah. mind, as a sure, go ahead. engineer, yeah, I yeah. say that this condition we found yeah. here was like quite dangerous right, and unstable, yeah. and we had to do work before we even filed yeah. with the DOB and LTC. We did it simultaneously because there were life safety issues. Um, and I understand the desire to rebuild, but we anticipate there are going to be more storms in the area. Yeah. The building is spending a lot of money, and they asked me as a structural engineer, what will survive better, a wall that's already four inches out of plumb at the base, and then you know, you try and tie it back as best you can with a mix of old and not so old brick, yep. or a newly reconstructed vertical wall retaining all of the original granite features. And I, I feel that a vertical wall is a better wall. Okay, I mean, I, I find it hard to quarrel with that assessment from a structural engineer. I think there are legitimate questions raised on the brick, Maybe the staff could work through that piece by piece, if you will, brick by brick as we go along. But uh, let's go to a more general discussion. Joan? Yeah, I, I agree with that assessment. I think that this needs to be fixed. Uh, we've had some precedent where we've done this before. There, there was another, remember that building on the corner in the village where the wall was uh, buffling out Mount and Street, yellow, yeah. you know, bellying and all yeah. that kind of thing. And we knew that we had to take care of it and that it wasn't up to us to hold up the repair of it. Mm -hmm. But what I would uh, suggest, and some of the other commissioners yeah. have alluded to, is that maybe there's a way that we could work some of the old brick in with it. Yeah. In some way, maybe uh, the applicant could work with the staff. If it looks no, way no, no, we'll have to discuss it later. Michael Goldblum, thank you. And then Michael Devonshire. Okay. Um, I think that. Um, If the reason stated by the applicant for the, the choice of going to a full rebuild versus, uh, you know, with new brick as opposed to either a partial rebuild or a full rebuild using salvaged and new brick combined is, is the search for certainty, I think that he will find that, that certainty is not to be had in a building from this, of this age. Uh, and that all you're doing is, is changing levels of, of uncertainty. And I don't think that, that having a, a, reusing the old brick in combination with the new 
uh, which would preserve historic materials, which would preserve the actual uh, scale of the brick and would be much closer to the original design uh, is, is really engaging in that much uncertainty. Uh, and yes, you would probably pay more uh, for the individual bricks, uh, but the fact that you're reusing perhaps 50% or more of the, of the old brick should come at some compensation to that. Um, I think that um, uh, the, the, the str obviously a vertical wall is, is a great thing. You're in, a, you're in an old building. The reason you bought it is because it's a beautiful old building. And to make it into a new building is going to take away that value. And I think that our job here is to preserve the old building to the greatest extent possible. That doesn't mean that you can't make the, the restorations that you need to make. But I, and I think that changing out the, uh, the brick that was not original is, is also approvable. But I don't think taking it down and, and putting up all new brick is, is the way to go. Michael Devonshire. I agree with Michael Devonshire. I don't really have much to add to that. OK. The, there is a difficulty in uh, working with a Flemish bond wall um, where you've got headers that are, that are penetrating two wides rather than just one. That, that complicates the project immediately. I would, I would make the presumption that uh, the original brick is set with a lime mortar. It's not a Portland cement mortar, so they should actually come off of that building rather easily. So you've, you've solved that problem. You're, you're able to save a certain amount of those bricks. If it's a, the necessity of, of losing some of the, of the existing brick, then perhaps what you do is you cut off the original brick at a certain floor and proceed higher with a, a newer brick, which is what happens down there all the time anyway. They took those early, 18th cent early 19th century buildings, added another story, and it was in a different brick, sometimes even in a different pattern. But I think in, in this particular case, I see no deterioration of the actual brick. And so for me, salvaging that original material is, is paramount here. But I, I agree completely with uh, the assessment of the structural engineer. Marjorie. I actually don't have anything to add. I agree with that. I think that's our job is to try to maintain historical integrity when it's possible. And um, reusing existing brick, original existing brick is part of that task. Fred. Okay. Well, I don't have anything to add either, but I'll just add a little statement or two for emphasis. <laughs> <laughs> but I will anyway, yes, Commissioner Ryan. Um, I just think it's been said, but I think the, um, you know, I'd rather, I'd much rather see patchwork uh, and a patchwork situation than all new. I think all new is the last, 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 last alternative. I parked my car for 30 years in a little <laughs> carriage house that was completely rebuilt with a plaque in Brooklyn Heights that says this wall was completely rebuilt and it's like a little piece of Disneyland in the Heights. I'm sure it copied it, but Boy, all the patina, all the reality, all the realness was lost in this little building. And I think that's what would happen here. So maybe a hybrid situation where new and old can be blended or something. But the last choice should be to uh, take it all down and rebuild it. I agree. Yeah, I, uh, you're really losing the entire historic character if you take off all the facade. You know, there's just not a question about that. And um, except for the window shape and, and so forth. Um, and obviously, if there is an imminent risk in doing so, that's a different issue. But we haven't really heard that from structural engineer or from Department of Buildings. So it needs to be secured. It needs to uh, be safe. But the idea that you can't use any of the historic material is obviously very troubling. Can we approve the reconstruction and have the staff monitor or work on the amount of brick to be? Mm -hmm. yes. Got to go yeah. through a serious exercise on that. Yeah. I, I don't want to hold them up. OK. Going forward, Would you do that, Michael? Uh, we'll close the hearing, please. Motion, second. Thank you. Okay. Fashion, I, fashion okay. approval. Would that hold it? Hold all righty. Yeah. In regards to 130 Beekman Street, also known as 229 Water Street in the South Street historic di Seaport Historic District, the application is to reconstruct the brick masonry facade. I recommend 
improved with modifications, finding that the structural integrity of the brick masonry wall in certain areas has been compromised. Therefore, some reconstruction is necessary to preserve the building. The new uh, structural wall using new and combined and unsalvaged face brick, resetting granite lintels and piers, will aid in the long-term preservation of the building, that the historic face brick can be salvaged to a certain extent, and that new brick will uh, be mixed in and either match or not at the, at the staff's discretion uh, as close as possible, uh, be close as possible match um, in terms of details, pattern, size, shape, and mortar joints. That the historic brownstone window lintels and sills will be reincorporated into the uh, reconstructed brick masonry facade. That the historic wall has been thoroughly documented in terms of the dimension and fenestration. That the alterations will not detract from the special architectural and historic character of the building and historic district. The staff will uh, engage with the applicant in a detailed effort to assess the reusability of uh, all historic materials at the site and to the maximum extent possible they will be reused. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Approved. Work with the staff. Carrie, you got your, got your work cut out for you. Yep. You got a lot of heavy, heavy brick right. lifting. Thank you, heavy everybody, lifting. for the day. Bricks aren't light. Right. We're done. Right. All the work is done. Gotcha.